Okay, so in this video we want to continue on from the basic expansion techniques we discussed in the first video, the algebra review, um, and review some of our other um, expansion techniques. So we just looked at the single distributive law. We want to extend that here to the double distributive law, and then some special cases of the double distributive law, like difference of two squares and perfect squares. Once again, the goal here is about being able to expand efficiently. Okay. I want us to get past, when we're using the double distributive law, having to do four separate multiplications and write them all out and then collect like terms. I want you to be able to do some of that in your head and to be able to just write down the answer. Okay? As I said, expanding brackets is, you know, going forward, that's really a base level skill that we haven't got time to be wasting two or three lines of working on expanding out the brackets because it'll be a technique we're using as part of something else, as part of a much bigger problem. Okay. We want to be able to invest the time in the, the newer elements of the problem. Okay, so double distributive law is when we have um, brackets involving um, at least two terms, two at least two brackets involving at least two terms. Um, okay, and what we need to understand is that everything in the first bracket must multiply everything in the second bracket. So A times C plus A times D and then plus B times C plus B times D. Okay. Some people use the acronym FOIL to remember the four multiplications that need to be done. First terms is A times C. Outside terms is A times D. Inside terms is B times C. And last terms is B times D. Okay. So that can help you to ensure that you've done all four multiplications. Now, we're often looking at expanding expressions of this form, particularly when we get into working with quadratic functions and then um, beyond that, cubic and quartic, etc. functions. So if we're expanding out x plus a number times x plus another number, this could be done really quickly by noting some patterns that happen when we expand. So if we use FOIL, we're going to do x times x, which is x squared. We're going to do x times b, which is bx. We're going to do a times x, which is ax. And we're going to do a times b, which is ab. These two terms in the middle are going to be like terms. Okay? If your brackets are of the same form, an x term and a number, an x term and a number, the two middle multiplications will always be like terms. And so they can then be collected together. In this instance, it's a bit trickier. It's easier if they're numbers, but essentially x is the common factor. We're going to have a plus b times x. So I really want you to be able to kind of think that through in your head. So if you're expanding out x plus 2 times x plus 5, you're going to have x squared plus 2 plus 5x, so 7x plus 2 times 5. I tend to still think through those four multiplications in my head. x times x is x squared, then I'm going to have plus 5x plus 2x, but I do that collection of like terms in my head and straight away get to plus 7x. So plus 5x plus 2x gives me 7x, and then 2 times 5 gives me 10. Okay, so trying to focus on being able to go straight here when it's a nice, um, simple bracket, so x plus or minus a number, x plus or minus a number. Okay. Second example um, here, x minus 3 times x plus 4. In my head I would go, well that's x times x which is x squared, and then it's plus 4x minus 3x which is going to be plus 1x, and then negative 3 times 4 which is negative 12, and get me straight here. Okay. So again here in ex um, example 1, we want to expand these brackets. So again, I'm thinking x times x is x squared, then it's going to be x times 5, which is 5x, and negative 3 times x, which is negative 3x. So we've got 5x plus negative 3x, so that's going to be 2x, and then we've got negative 3 times 5, which is negative 15. Okay? So that coefficient is these two numbers added together. And that's really important when we go back to factorising. This number is those two numbers um, multiplied together, and this middle term here is those two numbers added together. Um, in example like example 2, where the, there's a negative, the terms are out of order, I would probably take a moment to write out my four terms and then collect the like terms. So 2a times 7 is 14a, 2a times negative a is negative 2a squared, negative 1 times 7 is negative 7, negative 1 times negative a is plus a. So there are like terms there and there, but it's a bit trickier to kind of think things are in your head. So if you need to write out the four terms, by all means do just mean where you can start to see patterns and efficiencies. I want you to start to try and practice using those. Okay? Um, we want to collect the like terms. We're also going to write it in a more conventional order. So for decreasing powers of x, or a in this case, 
so negative 2a squared is the highest power of a. Then we've got 14a plus a, so that's plus 15a, and then we've got minus 7. Okay, expanding brackets using the difference of two squares. So if our brackets are of this form, the, the two brackets have the same terms in them. Okay, so you have whatever this term is, it's the same as the first term in the second bracket, and whatever this term is, it's the same as the first term in the second bracket. And then you have a minus in one bracket and a plus in the other bracket. It wouldn't matter if those minus and plus around the other way. When you expand that out, you're going to do a times a, which is a squared, plus a times b, so a times positive b, which is plus ab, then negative b times a, so that's minus ab, and then negative b times b, so that's minus b squared. And what you'll find is those two terms will cancel out because the positive in one bracket and the negative in the other bracket means that you're going to get plus ab and negative ab, and so they end up cancelling out. Okay, And so you're always just going to get left with a squared minus b squared. So it is just the first thing in the bracket squared minus the second thing in the bracket squared, as long as it fits this standard format. So if we can see that our brackets are of this form, then we want to make use of that difference of two squares, so not have to write out these two terms and see that they cancel out. So here I'm thinking, right, it's going to give me a difference of two squares. It's going to be x squared minus 4 squared, so it's always minus. It's a difference subtraction difference of two squares, subtraction of two squares. So it'll be x squared minus 4 squared, so in this case that's x squared minus 16. Okay, so again we're looking at same first terms in the bracket, same second terms in the bracket, plus in one bracket, minus in the other bracket, so we do the yellow thing squared minus the blue thing squared. Here in the second, in example 4, we've got 3x minus 5y times 3x plus 5y. Okay, so 3x is in both brackets, 5y is in both brackets, we've got a plus in one and a minus in the other, so it's going to give us a difference of two squares, it'll be 3x all squared, take away 5y all squared. So always the difference, so it's always a subtraction, the yellow thing all squared minus the blue thing all squared. We do need brackets there, because 3x all squared is 9x squared, 5y all squared is 25y squared. Okay, and then expanding perfect squares. This becomes particularly important down the track to be able to work efficiently with perfect squares. So yes, um, a plus b all squared is a plus b times a plus b. And when we expand that out, we get a times a plus a times, so a squared plus a times b, which is ab, plus b times a, which is ba or ab, plus b times b, which is b squared. And these are like terms in the middle. I've written them in different orders there, but they're still like terms. So we get two lots of a times b. So we get a squared comes from that, we get b squared comes from that, and then we get two lots of ab in the middle. If it was a minus in the bracket, it'd be pretty much the same thing, except when you expand it out, it'd be minus a times b and minus a times b. So you're going to end up with minus two lots of ab. So essentially, if you've got a plus or minus b all squared, so it doesn't have to be a single term, it could be 2x plus 3y all squared, and we can still use this pattern to expand it. Okay, So it'll be the first thing in the bracket all squared at the beginning, it'll be the last thing in the bracket all squared at the end, and then the middle term, if this is a plus here, it'll be a plus here, if that's a minus there, it'll be a minus there, that's going to be the same and then it'll be two lots of a times b. So two lots of the first thing in the bracket times the second thing in the bracket. All right, so we want to try and get used to expanding up perfect squares in this way. In the long run, it'll be more efficient, okay? I know at the beginning it says, oh, can't I just write them out and expand them out? Yes, but in the long run, we want to be able to do this just by writing straight the answer straight down. So we've got x plus 3 all squared. So it's x plus 3 all squared, okay? So it is going to be the yellow thing squared. It's going to be plus because that's going to match this. So if that's a plus there, it'll be plus here. And then it's going to be 2 times the yellow thing times the blue thing. And then it's going to be plus the blue thing squared. Okay, that's the pattern we're looking at. All right, so in this case, it's going to be x squared plus 2 times x times 3 plus 3 squared. So that's going to be x squared plus 6x plus 9. Let me just 
just move that over out of the way of my other example. Sorry, so yellow and blue. Okay, the second one, we've got 2a minus 1 all squared, so the 2a will be the first term, the 1 will be the second term, and the negative just tells us where a negative goes in our expansion. So we're going to have something all squared minus 2 times something times something plus something all squared. Okay, it'll be the yellow thing here and here, and it'll be the blue thing here and here. Okay, so it'll be 2a all squared minus 2 times 2a times 1 plus 1 all squared. So that's going to be 4a squared minus, uh, that's 4a, 2 times 2a times 1, and then plus 1 squared is 1. Okay. You won't need to write out this line, you'll be able to do that thinking in your head. Okay, It's going to be x squared plus 2 times x times 3 plus 9 plus 3 squared. This will be 2a all squared minus 2 times um, 2a times 1 plus 1 squared. Okay. Try and practice the perfect square questions using that. Um, this is something I want to highlight as being a really common issue. Okay a plus b all squared does not equal a squared plus b squared. That's not how powers work, okay? You can't just do, a, that's, that's ignoring the brackets essentially. You're changing the order of operations there. You have to be able to do a plus b and then square it, or you have to be able to, if you can't do that, and we can't because we can't, you have to be able to think about it as a plus b times a plus b, and therefore expand it out. Okay, this is a really common error here. Um, students do it all the time. Please try and flag it as something that when, the minute you're tempted to do it, you think, oh, right, yeah, Miss Kelly said that's that thing that I never should, I should never, never do. Okay, so, um, you know, for me, this is the sort of algebraic error that, you know, sets off big alarm bells in my head. So try and make it set off big alarm bells in your own head too. Okay, expanding brackets involving more than two terms. It's still the distributive law in that everything in the first um, bracket must be distributed across everything in the second bracket. So x times x squared, x times 5x, x times negative 1, negative 2 times x squared, negative 2 times 5x, negative 2 times negative 1. Just take your time and write out all the terms. So x times x squared is x cubed, x times 5x is 5x squared, x times negative 1 is negative x. Negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times 5x is negative 10x. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Collecting the like terms, x squared, we've got 5x squared minus 2x squared, so that's 3x squared. We've got negative x minus 10x, so that's negative 11x plus 2. Expanding expressions involving more than two brackets. Okay, again, this is just you've got to go one step at a time. It's a bit like if we're multiplying together more than two things. So 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2, it's 6, okay? 2 times 3 times 4, we work out 2 times 3, that's 6, and do 6 times 4. Or we can work out 3 times 4 and do 2 times 12, and that's still 24. Or we can reorder it, and we can do 2 times 4, so that's 8 times 3, and that's still 24. So the order of the multiplication doesn't really matter, but essentially we multiply two of the things together first, and then we multiply by the third thing. And so we're going to do the same thing here, okay? We're going to multiply two of the things together first, then focus on doing that times 2x minus 1. Be a bit careful with brackets here. The temptation will be to do things like, okay, well, I'm going to have x squared plus 4x uh, minus 2x. So plus 4x minus 2x is plus 2x. And then minus 2 times 4, which is minus 8. And then times 2x minus 1. It's really important that there has to be brackets around all of that. Okay, We're doing that first. And then it's going to be all of that times 2x minus 1. And now it's again like the previous example, we just need to make sure that everything in the first bracket multiplies everything in the second bracket. So the six multiplications, the three things in the first bracket each have to multiply the two things in the second bracket. So we'll just do it one step at a time and then collect like terms, otherwise there's too many terms and you'll lose track of them. x squared times 2x is 2x cubed, x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. 
negative 8 times 2x is negative 16x. Just going to move all that over so I don't run out of room. And negative 8 times negative 1 is plus 8. Okay, sorry, I lost that in the move. Alright, collecting like terms, 2x cubed. We've got negative x squared plus 4x squared, so negative 1x squared plus 4x squared is plus 3x squared. Negative 2x minus 16 is negative, sorry, 6, negative 2x minus 16x is negative 18x, and then we've got the plus 8. Okay, so today's work is from a worksheet. Um, please make sure that you are um, giving yourself ample practice. If you find you need a bit more practice to get quicker at a particular type of question, do a few more parts in that question. Okay, um, but really working on those efficiencies. They'll make you slower at first. Okay. You need to be prepared to work a bit slower at first in order to then establish the habits and the routines and the patterns in your own mind so that it ultimately becomes quicker. Okay? It's being prepared to take that little step backwards in order to make a larger step forwards in the long run.